Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar on Create Your Data Modernization Strategy on Cloud. I'm Ananya Sharma, your host for the day. I would like to guide you a bit about the tool to ensure that you have an interactive experience during the webinar. Through the discussion, if you want to say anything or ask anything to the presenter, please click on the hand, hand raise button and we'll attend to you. You will also type down your question in the Q&A and chat section below, and it will be taken up at the scheduled Q&A pit stop. With that, let me introduce you to Mr. Suresh, who is the head of marketing from Scalability Experts. Scalability Experts has been global leaders from the past 20 years in digital transformation, business intelligence, and consulting. Their deep industry experience and proven award-winning methodology helps them deliver the best of their customers, resulting in improved business performance and operational efficiency. Scalability experts have their center of excellence in Singapore, through which they cater to the APAC customers and in Australia for their customers from Australia and New Zealand. With this, I would like to start with our first poll to understand what is the cloud adoption? Is the cloud adoption a part of your IT innovation strategy or not? So I'm launching the poll. I would request everyone to participate for the same. Hope you will be able to see you that in your screen. Hope everybody can see that in their screen. Please start voting. Yes, we are getting the participants. We have good audience, Resh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They are participating a lot. I can see the number of people who are, you know. And it's good to see that. Um, the answer is yes for everyone. So yeah. Cloud adoption is a part of their IT innovation strategy. So that's great. Right, right, right. The session so I'll just, is going uh, to be extremely helpful for them. Right. I'm just putting it for another 10 seconds and then I'll hand over it to you. Great. So I'm ending the poll now. And sharing the result with you, it is 100% as yes. So now I'll just pass on to Shresh. Shresh, please, over to you. You can take ahead. Hey, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction, Ananya. And uh, so hello, everyone. And I'm really super excited to introduce to you uh, today's speaker. He is the global CTO of uh, Scalability Experts, Mr. Rajinder Gill. He has more than 25 years of experience helping customers and businesses modernize their data estate. And uh, he also serves on the Partner Advisory Council for Microsoft. So I think uh, without further ado, I think uh, over to you, Raj. Yeah, thank you, Shreyas. And now, uh... Welcome everyone to the session today. So as uh, what I'd like to start with is an excellent quote from, uh, from Gartner, which I think summarizes the kind of the topic we're gonna to be discussing today, which is information or data is really the oil of your company's engine in the 21st century and analytics uh, on top of the data is the combustion engine. Uh, so it's very important that you have your data modernized and you have it uh, well organized uh, in order to achieve the kind of the, the outcomes it can give you. At the same time, adoption of cloud is very, very important because cloud opens up the uh, abundance of opportunities around uh, analytics and security and other things. So it, given this context, uh, we're gonna be talking about the different areas of what it takes to be modernizing your data environment and remember, whenever we talk about the data, it's, it's always with your, your database as well as your application. So, um, you know, scalability experts, we have been kind of consulting with clients for many years. I have been personally involved with some of the top 
uh, banking, manufacturing, retail, telco companies around the world, uh, helping them build a strategy around the data modernization. So what I'm going to be talking about today is, is what do you need for a good data modernization strategy? And I'm going to be talking from real customer experience, giving you some examples and scenarios on how customers have tackled this problem. And, and why you need to do now? It was great to see in the survey that majority of you want to make this as a strategy uh, for the cloud adoption, you know, as, as part of the IT strategy. So it fits right into the fact that this content will be very, very valuable to you. Um, you know, what benefits other customers have received as part of this modernization journey, right? Um, how do you plan and strategize, you know, and, and how do you build your cloud readiness? Uh, what are the different steps? What are the approaches that really work? What are the best practices? And one of the important things you need to learn is how do you build a business case? Because it's very important to build that TCO ROI so you can present to your stakeholders how they should be on this journey, right? And then we'll summarize with in terms of what are the tools and methodologies which are available out there for this type of uh, modernization uh, journey. So let's uh, first define the problem. And the way to do that is to kind of look at, you know, what a customer scenario might look like. So we actually went back and talked to a few customers recently. And um, we did a survey and we found out very interesting things. So, you know, a lot of these customers are, are really interested in churn analysis, as you could see. And then uh, they want to use that data and they want to adopt uh, cloud for that purpose. And then, um, you know, customers did not have the desired protection. So security is a big, big concern. So when you're doing data modernization, as part of that, the uh, cloud can provide you that security uh, aspect, right? And then how do you, um, you know, recognize the data assets are highly proliferated and heterogeneous. So a lot of the customers have different data assets and they want to consolidate and modernize them at the same time. And what are the, um, you know, how do you prioritize the data and application modernization? So a lot of the customers felt like that was very important for them. And, and um, how do you reduce your TCO ROI? And how do you build uh, your, your uh, analytics on top of it? So these are some of the results that maybe you can, um, you know, relate with uh, to some extent. Um, so um, given that as a background, now next thing is, let's take a, so this is a typical customer that we worked with recently. It's from a manufacturing background. So as you can see, this particular customer had a lot of different databases. So they approached us and said, hey, look, scalability experts, you know, we have been investing in traditional database environments like SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase. Uh, as you can see, they have DB2 as, as well. And uh, quite a few uh, database environments. So their licensing cost was very, very high. At the same time, managing and maintaining these databases was very expensive. You have to have different skill sets of resources for SQL Server. Um, and the number of databases just kept, keeps increasing and increasing. So the cost of ownership of this environment was very, very high. So they were interested in a couple of things. The other thing we found in this environment, in their environment, as you can see, is that uh, you have the production environment, which is about 255, uh, and then all of the non-prod environments are quite high. So this is, again, uh, a very common in customer scenarios that they, that they have a, a large non-prod environment. So cloud can be a great way. So data modernization journey, if you can just take the uh, non-prod environment and start migrating that, that can start giving you immediate benefits. So number one, they wanted to kind of reduce the cost of ownership. Number two, they wanted to immediately get some of the non-prod into, into cloud so that they could start uh, reducing the data center footprint and, 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 and improving the cost of ownership. And, and lastly, they also wanted to explore how they can get away from license, uh, very expensive database environments to a more open source environment. So a lot of customers today are looking at open source as a potential uh, to uh, you know, reduce their cost of ownership around data assets. So these are some of the things that you know, we identified for this customer. And this one is from a, a banking and finance customer. And so this particular customer had a, had a different problem. They, they came for, for their uh, data modernization from an infrastructure point of view and uh, because they had lots of VMs. So this is just a, a part of their footprint. They had over 5,000 virtual machines, uh, but this is just a sample of their data. So as you can see, um, you know, uh, they, have, they have over 10 different varieties of operating system. 
uh, running in their environment, right? So, uh, uh, and this can be very expensive. You know, imagine patching and managing different versions of the operating system. The other thing we found was that when we looked at uh, their, their uh, VMs and their applications, uh, we found that uh, uh, there were, uh, you know, out of 141, there are about 30 VMs which were, which were powered off, which were not even turned on, right? And they, which they were considering migrating to cloud. And, and, and then another 30, 39 were not even used in the last six months. So this gives you about 45% of their VMs were actually uh, not needed to be migrated to Azure or to the cloud. So this is very important. So when you do this type of analysis, you can now understand what you really need to migrate to cloud and what you should avoid. And then again, they also had different flavors of their hypervisor. And uh, another aspect that's very important to identify is what type of uh, usage you have. So for example, majority of their VMs were in low usage. Uh, some of them are in high and some of them are in medium. So uh, why are these things very important to identify before you start on your data modernization journey or your cloud journey? And the reason is that when you go to cloud, you go from a um, CapEx to an OpEx model. So you go to a pay-as-you-go model. So you really want to make sure that you keep your cost of ownership low. So you want to identify what you really need to migrate versus what you don't need to migrate. And, and we have had customers who have started the um, uh, cloud journey and, and they call us and say, hey, look, we're having a lot of problems. It's really becoming very expensive. So, uh, so having and doing this type of assessment, having this data in your hand beforehand is very, very important. And then I'll talk about kind of the steps and the methodologies and how you, how you go about doing it. Um, so, so those are a couple of uh, customer examples. Um, now, why does uh, you know, your company need to modernize to cloud uh, you know, today? So, so here are some of the trigger points. And some of you may be uh, you know, relating to this, um, but I just wanna share kind of, um, when we look at the customers we have helped over the last few years, what are some of those common, uh, common trigger points, right? So uh, you have your, uh, some of the customers have data center uh, that they have currently using and they wanna, they wanna basically renew that, uh, the contracts. That may be a good uh, point to start looking at cloud, right? So instead of renewing your data center, you can start looking at migrating to cloud and moving your assets there. You know, acquisitions, sometimes mergers and acquisitions can trigger uh, that can be very expensive from an IT perspective. So that may be a great trigger point to go to cloud. Um, capacity needs. Now for databases, it's very important. And, and some of you may be able to relate to this. It's, it's very common in databases that you have very high spikes during weekend, month end, or quarter end uh, processing. Um, and it's very difficult to build that capacity on-prem. So cloud is great because you, 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 you are going to a OpEx model, so you kind of pay as you go. So you only pay for the capacity that you're using. And then you have software and hardware refresh. So for example, if you have Oracle or SQL Server, um, DB2 licensing renewal, that's a great point to start looking at potentially open source and, and going in that direction. So with that, um, I think we should uh, do a quick poll. So I'd like to just get your feedback on what may be your um, trigger point in, in um, uh, So if you can just pull, um, uh, just give us some feedback on what are your migration blockers that you're seeing? Um, uh, yeah, and this poll is anonymous, so feel free to give your feedback in terms of what you are seeing as your organization's uh, blockers from our migrating to cloud. Great, we are um, getting a lot of answers under co cost. I think people are considering cost and security. Yeah, exactly. more feature. Yeah, yeah that, that's great because uh, I think that uh, I'll just give a, another 10 seconds. If, if you haven't voted, please vote. Uh, your feedback is very, very important. So uh, we can get a context of, uh, yeah, okay, cool. So uh, 
share the results. All right, so hopefully everybody can see. Um, cost is obviously a big concern, management, implementation, and security. So we're gonna talk about all of these. Uh, so thank you again for, for your feedback uh, uh, as well. So, um, so with that, I think uh, we should kind of uh, keep going and, and talk about why Microsoft Azure, right? So, uh, sorry, I just uh, popped up a couple of slides ahead. So, um, so Mike, why Microsoft Azure? So uh, Azure, as you know, is one of the leaders in uh, as per the Microsoft uh, Gartner uh, quadrant in cloud technologies and, and specifically, uh, when you go to Microsoft Azure, it's, it's highly optimized for database workloads. So for example, you can pay, you know, you, you, go, you go from a pay as you go model. Uh, there's a lot of automated admin, there's HADR uh, built in. Um, and you have uh, immense uh, uh, optimization as well as analytics like machine learning and AI capabilities. Um, and you also have, uh, you know, security, so imagine if you have your own data center, you have to invest in uh, implementing security and other aspects of uh, data protection. Um, Azure, uh, as far as I know, has, has, has not had a single um, security threat so far, uh, never been optima, compromised in terms of data security. So they invest, Microsoft invests significant amount of uh, resources in that area. And also it gives you that innovation, that, that uh, global scaling. So for example, if, you have, um, if you're based in Singapore or Australia, um, you can replicate your data in, in United States data center or European data center and without incurring, uh, incurring significant cost, right? So, so those, those kinds of uh, benefits are available. So Azure is obviously uh, one of the leaders. And these are some of the other data points um, around how Microsoft is really investing heavily in security, uh, in the poll, obviously many of you provided security as your key concern. So uh, we have many customers that, and I'll show you an example of where a customer had security issues or concerns. Um, also you have uh, the ability to leverage uh, um, Azure uh, hybrid benefits. So for what, what that means is, and, and I'm not gonna go into detail, and if you have any questions or you wanna learn more about this, please uh, let us know and, and we can set up some time to, to get, you know, set up a call with you. But uh, this is basically where your licensing cost, if you go to Azure, can be cut by 50% uh, on, on databases. Uh, you also have the ability to reserve upfront and pay less. So, so for example, if you, you can go for a three-year pricing and, and, or a one-year pricing. So if you go to three-year pricing, the cost can go down by almost 30, 30, 40%. And, and if you have end-of-life uh, SQL servers or Windows servers, uh, just by going to cloud, you get extended uh, security updates. Uh, so that's another thing, right? So for example, if you are running on-prem and you're concerned that these servers are end of life, you know, uh, and I don't have security updates, you can just migrate them to cloud and Microsoft will provide you those security updates and continue to support those environments. And then obviously um, great, great uh, ability to uh, innovate and, and the agility to basically um, uh, grow your performance and operations across the board. Now, so, so far we you know, talked about um, why customers are considering uh, data modernization strategy, the cloud journey, um, and why Microsoft Azure is such a great platform. Now we get into kind of how you plan and strategize your, your database uh, uh, and data modernization strategy, right? So Microsoft uh, actually provides a, a, what we call a, a, a cloud adoption framework. Um, and, and there is a link after the session that we'll provide you, which will give you a lot of information on what that means. It's basically a guidance or best practices document. Um, it's not complete, but it covers most of the aspects. The reason I wanted to show this to you is that you can use this as a baseline and then how we have used this baseline to further enhance and bring value to our customers, right? So uh, very simple, uh, you, you know, you define your strategy. So, so, you know, don't start migrating to cloud, just, you know, onesie, twosie or, or, or without having a strategy, you really have to have a strategy. When you migrate your database and application, you really have to get the executive sponsorship and, and, and different stakeholders because there are a lot of different uh, organizations that will be involved in the Azure migration, your application owners, your infrastructure, networking, security. So it's very important that you have the, the 
uh, the 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 uh, feedback and involvement from all these on these uh, uh, you know organizations. And then you know you want to make sure that you have the a proper partner engaged with you uh, as well. Um, the other thing, once you have defined the, the, the strategy, the next thing is you want to kind of uh, do a you know planning and, and planning is should be based on your own data, not not based on someone else's data. Now, how do you get data from your own environment? Uh, you have to do a discovery and assessment. So, you know, please invest in that. In fact, you know, after the session, we have a, a, a potential offer for you to, to do that assessment um uh for you so so this this assessment is extremely important because this gets all the data from your environment and starts building feeding into your strategy you have to have a business case you have to have a migration plan and a and, and, a, and a roadmap right so the planning is very important and then uh getting your your technical uh resources skilled up when you go to cloud and many customers kind of make this mistake is they, they start migrating but when they, once they go to Azure, they don't know how to monitor, how to govern, um, how to manage their assets, and, and they then end up uh, relying on other uh, uh, resources and other outside vendors, and the cost goes up. So as you're migrating, you, you really have to upskill your resources uh, because you'll be facing with a lot of new technologies and new interfaces and, and something very important. And then you, know, you, you execute your migration uh, over a governance and, and management. So this is at a high level what the um, uh, what the plan looks like. Now uh, let's look at um, double click on that and look at it in a bit more detail around what's really happening. So number one, when you're migrating, you have to really consider all these three aspects: you, infrastructure, database, as well as application, right? So you can't just just do database migration because database and application migration are, are together. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the the, the problems that you can have if you deal with databases in isolation. And infrastructure obviously is very important, the storage, networking, and the impact of uh, how that's gonna work in Azure. Uh, networking especially is very, very important. For example, if you leave your application on-prem and your database is in Azure, then you really have to make sure that you have the proper bandwidth between the application and the database. So uh, the assessment, um, uh, you know, um, it really is important for, for the databases when you look at um, database operating system and whether uh, the database is uh, OLTP database or a data warehouse um, so that you can build that right architecture and cloud for that. Um, identifying the application database dependency is very important and complexity and utilization. Um, dependencies are extremely important because when you migrate, you have to know all the other applications that are talking to the database. Because if you just take the database and migrate that, um, and you may break other things, right? Um, compatibility issues. So for example, if you're migrating to open source or you're migrating to a newer version of the database, you need to make sure what kind of application changes you need to make, uh, code changes you need to make uh, for your application to work. Uh, connection strings, uh, dynamic SQL, these kinds of other major things that you need to address. Uh, so this is all being, you know, should be done as part of your assessment. You really need to know uh, what are you dealing with in terms of migration? What are the dependencies, complexity? What is the utilization? The utilization helps you do the sizing and the architecture in, in, in the cloud. And then you want to know what the compatibility issues are, you know, uh, any security issues that you need to uh, be addressing before you migrate. So all of these aspects have to be addressed in, in, assess, uh, in the assessment uh, state. And then you, do, you start doing the migration planning. And typically customers like to do a POC. So again, we'll be talking about at the end um, uh, uh, how we can help you with this. But you know, this, this is a POC where you can take a small database and an application, you migrate that to, to cloud, and then you can have a success a story. And then you can share that with your stakeholders. Uh, and you can also learn from it, right? Um, and then you have to define your migration phases. So typically, Migration phases uh, are done uh, in low, medium, high. So what you want to do is you want to take your low complexity uh, applications and databases, migrate them first, then your medium complexity, and then your high complexity. That's typically, now in some cases it might be a bit different, um, but in most cases that is the approach you want to do, uh, you want to take. You don't want to take a very high complex application and start migrating that first, because uh, if that's not successful, you can definitely uh, have some problems. The other thing you want to look for is automation and validation. And I'll talk about this in a second, but this is also very important. 
um, and then uh, have a clear defined methodology in terms of what tools you're going to use, uh, what frameworks are you going to use, and things like that. Uh, and optimization is also very important um, because uh, if you are uh, high, if you have a highly proliferated um, environment on prem, you need to make sure that when you go to cloud, you have it optimized. Because when you go to cloud, you go to a pay as you go model. And if cost is a big concern, if you take everything that you have on prem and just move it um, uh, to cloud, it can be very expensive. And then you also want to look at go go governance and security and vulnerability issues and, and those aspects. So, so assess, migrate, optimize, and secure and manage. So these are kind of the big picture items of the, of the framework. Um, now, as you're kind of moving down, so, so you have your plan, you build your strategy. Now, how do you start kind of you know, migrating, right? So, so you have your pre-migration, migration, and post-migration steps. So again, in pre-migration, we talked about the discovery, the assessment, and how do you, you know, all the application and schema changes that you need to make. Migration is where you actually make those changes. You do the data sync uh, between on-prem and Azure. You do your cutover. And then post-migration is, you know, you start optimizing and you start basically um, uh, 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 making sure the application and, and uh, all the functions are working correctly. All right, so, so how do you now take the uh, best practices uh, framework and, and approach to, to migrations. And this is where I think we're gonna start getting into some of the uh, tools that Scalability Experts has built. So we've been working with uh, customers uh, globally um, for the last uh, you know, 10 years and helping them uh, migrate to cloud. And we have built a lot of tool sets. We use Microsoft tools as well as we have our own IP to help customers. So, so basically I'm gonna talk about what that best practices approach looks like, right? So, so imagine you have your source system. These are your on-prem system, right? Your different operating systems. You have, you have Linux, you have uh, uh, AIX, you have mainframe, you have or Windows. Uh, you have your applications. Applications either could be third-party vendor applications where you don't have the source code, or it could be in-house applications. And you have also your different databases, right? A variety of databases. So, so, so you, what you want to, what I'm trying to focus on here is that you want to do a full stack migrate assessment. So, so you don't want your assessment to just focus on the database because then you don't know what the application issues might be. You don't know what the operating system issues might be. If it's a third party application, whether that third party application supports uh, Postgres or not, you don't know if Postgres is your target, right? Or whether it supports the cloud uh, architecture. The other thing is, uh, so that's number one. Number two is that you want an agent-less process. So we have had many customers where it's very difficult to install anything on the production system. So you don't want to have anything that gets installed. So, so you want to have an agent-less process. So, so this is an agent-less process. It basically connects to your source systems, runs some queries, very transparent, brings the data back. And then you also want to get performance data, at least 24 hours. Ideally, you can get even longer because more performance data you can capture, um, uh, you can start uh, creating a more accurate target sizing and costing. And, and so, uh, you know, customers say, hey, okay, I'm running uh, an eight core 32 GB RAM machine on-prem, I'll just use the same uh, configuration in Azure. Uh, well, if that VM is only used 40% uh, or 50% of the time, then you don't need to, right? So, so collecting the performance data is very, very important. Now, what this framework does is it collects this data agent-less, and then these are the kind of different variables uh, that you wanna look for. Dependencies, as I mentioned, very, very important, right? You cannot migrate without knowing what the dependencies are. Uh, what are the application patterns? Is this web-based applications, Java application, is a .NET, um, you know, is it PHP? Uh, how many layers are there in the application architecture? Um, compatibility issues, right? All the errors that you may need to fix in order to uh, convert. So for example, if you're going from Oracle to Postgres, then all of your schema should work. All of your queries should work. So what are the errors? How do you fix them, right? Um, uh, what is the TCO ROI? So you have to build a good business case uh, uh, you know, over three years, five years, 10 years. Um, and this is something that's really uh, near and dear to my uh, thinking is that what we found is many customers, their biggest concern is once they migrate to the cloud, how do they validate performance? And that's a very tricky thing. 
And customers can spend months and months trying to validate their application. So the way we do that is you capture uh, user logs, and I'm going to talk about a, a little bit more detail further down. There are some slides on that. But this is something that's very important to take home, is that you want the ability to be able to validate your performance and code in a reliable manner. And that's where these uh, pre and post migration query traces come in, and, and we'll be discussing that. So, um, so this is at a high level, you know, what that framework uh, as per the best practices look like, right? Now let's dive into a customer scenario. So this is a, a retail customer of ours that we worked with recently. And I know there's a lot of information on the, on the slide. This is a dashboard that we presented to their executives. Uh, they really loved it. Um, and, and I just want to kind of walk you through uh, what was this scenario, right? So uh, this is obviously a Power BI dashboard. So, so you can see that um, the data is being analyzed and being presented. Now we're just looking at SQL Server uh, out of all the databases, we are just looking at the SQL Server footprint, right? Um, so there are about 87 servers, um, 134 instances. Uh, they are consuming up 415 cores. So that's the licensing. Now, one of the unique things about this customer was that their databases were huge. Right, so this, we're talking about 50 plus terabytes of data here, right? Um, and and uh, when we looked at the utilization, we identified that they could have 42% improvement once they go to Azure. So they're, 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 on an average, their SQL servers were about 58% utilized. So it's almost half of utilization. So imagine if this customer took the approach of migrating everything as is, they would be paying twice as much for the environment in Azure than they typically would. So, so just by doing that thorough performance uh, and utilization study, we were able to identify the cost savings for those, for those uh, uh, servers to, to reduce. The other thing is that this customer was very interested in making sure that if there are any security issues or fixes they need to uh, do upfront, that we identify them and we, we implement them. So we um, actually were able to identify those security. So here you see the utilization breakdown. Here's the complexity of migrating each of the, so it's a very nicely presented information. So you know exactly what your utilization is for the servers. You know which service uh, you need to fix uh, from a security aspect. So for example, these 28 instances where, which has some high security vulnerabilities that were identified, you probably don't want to migrate this to Azure unless and until you have fix these issues, right? So, um, because these vulnerabilities uh, were application and database specific, not infrastructure specific. Um, and then you also know how many of them are low complexity and, and high and medium so that you can plan which ones you're gonna migrate first and so on. And so, so this gives you that, that, that information, uh, also gives you what operating system you have and also which application is connecting to which database. And now, uh, once we identified this, now we went through uh, seven steps, uh, and, I'll, and I'll talk about that, on how we can further, we help this customer further optimize their, their uh, cost. So step number one. So if you just look at um, the hardware and software licensing cost, and when we did the analysis, as I mentioned, uh, the, the utilization analysis, uh, we, we were able to help them save uh, quite a bit of money because we could do some consolidation um, and licensing uh, optimization, right? Um, and then we were able to look at how we can uh, uh, help them adopt open source. So for example, um, uh, we looked at um, low complexity applications and databases and, and whether they can be converted to uh, open source Postgres or MySQL. Um, so that would be another area of, uh, of licensing. Now, even though I'm using SQL Server as an example in this customer scenario, remember these same scenarios, questions or issues are applicable to any database like Oracle or Sybase, right? So it's the same. So even in Oracle, you have enterprise edition and standard edition. So another thing we, we found that this customer was using uh, only enterprise edition. So enterprise edition is almost five times more expensive than standard edition. And that's true across any proprietary database. Uh, they're very expensive licenses. So we were able to identify and say, hey, you're not using any enterprise features. So uh, you don't need to run enterprise. You can just run standard edition of SQL Server. So that was uh, the third area of optimization. Now, 
Uh, you know, the other area is identifying end of life. So if you have end of life uh, service, in which case they do have, so they were looking at purchasing uh, end of life support from, from Microsoft uh, so they can keep running the 2008 uh, environment, uh, which can be very expensive. So uh, if we migrate to Azure, uh, that support is automatically uh, included. Um, the other area, the next is uh, reduction in storage. Um, so this particular customer, um, uh, now one thing I wanna pause here and mention is that when you go to Azure, let's say you, you migrate uh, your application and database in a VM uh, or any cloud, uh, even if you turn the VM off, you're still paying for the storage cost. So storage cost never goes away, right? So their database size was you know, quite high. So we were able to, to use database compression, which is available and reduce their cost significantly. I think we got about 30, 35% compression ratio. So that was um, quite nice uh, in, in terms of, uh, so, so that's another thing you could do is, you know, if, no, you don't wanna do data compression if your database size are very small, you know, 100 GB, you know, 200 GB. But if, if, if that cost goes up, then you definitely want to look at that. Um, and then we looked at uh, their utilization. So some of the databases were only busy eight hours out of, out of 24. Some were busy 18 hours. Some were busy 24 hours. So the ones that are busy eight hours, if you create a VM in, in cloud and, and pay uh, Microsoft for the entire 24 hours, that doesn't make sense because you're only using that VM or that service for uh, only eight hours, right? So, so you want to study and identify what your utilization is so that you can kind of um, do the math of how you're going to configure. So you can, you can consolidate your VMs and you can use the VMs for multi, multiple applications um, and, 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 and do that uh, optimization there. And then, um, you know, lastly, uh, you know, we, what we found here is that uh, each application had so many databases that were not even being used. So we actually looked at what are the active databases, which are the databases that are, that are being used by the applications. So you know, it's very common in customers, they'll create a database and never use it, right? Now that database may be a terabyte. And if you just move that database to, to Azure, that is cost to you. So, um, so you wanna look at which databases are currently used, which databases are not used, so that you can kind of you know, build your plan and say, you know, if the database is not used, I don't need to migrate that. So, um, hopefully this, this customer example gives you an idea of, of the possibilities you have. I mean, look at all the different optimizations. Uh, many of you said cost is a big concern for you, right? And that's why you wanna look at, uh, look at going to cloud. But cloud can also be very expensive if you don't do the planning, if you don't do the, the, the right type of analytics and look at your environment, build a strategy and really make sure you do the right things uh, and move it forward. All right, so... Um, now, when we talk about applications um, migration, so you have different options. So typically customers, uh, and, and these options, you know, fall in four different categories. You have the rehost, which is the easiest one. And customers do this as an initial phase one. So when you migrate your database, you modernize your data, uh, you know, you just uh, move your applications into VMs and then connect to database and then run those applications as is. And that's uh, very, very simple, very easy. And that's uh, you know, your IS strategy, right? Now, once you are comfortable with Azure uh, and cloud, you can start thinking of refactoring. So this is where you start making some code changes, optimizing it. For example, cloud can offer you containers um, and con containers are great. Um, and that's why you need to know, but not all applications use contain can use containers. So, so you have to really know whether the application is modern enough and, and what supportability it has in Azure for containers. So that's, and then you can start doing re-architecting re and rebuilding. This is a little bit more involved and um, might involve some more code changes, but th these are the possibilities that starts opening up. So you can see how just the fact that you go to cloud um, starts opening up all these possibilities for you to modernize your data and your application. So for example, by re-architecting and rebuilding, you can start really true using the past services like serverless technologies like microservices right uh, and these are great in further optimizing your application environment and also your um, um, uh, cost so um, here's a customer example uh, from a telecom com uh, customer uh, you know that we recently work with 
Um, and this customer, what we did is we said, okay, let's take a look at your application and your databases. So as you can see, these are all the different uh, VMs that the applications are using, um, you know, how many VMs each of the application is using. These are all the operating systems. As you can see, there are quite a few flavors of operating system um, dependencies. And, and again, this is telling you whether, um, uh, you know, the, the, the VM is on or off, how much it is being utilized, um, which application is running against which and which services are running against uh, uh, on, on each of the application. Now, this is where I want to really focus on. So, so we were able to do the analysis of the application. And as I showed you in the previous slide, we were able to very clearly identify to the customer on which category each of the application uh, belongs to when they are looking to modernize because they wanted to know, okay, which application they should migrate first. So for example, 108 applications, they could just re-host, right? Uh, and then uh, 35 applications, they could re-platform. And then there were 35 that they can retire because you know, they're not being used. And then, uh, and then, then re-architect uh, about 30 of them, right? So when we can identify such a way, uh, their data, then they can start putting it into the, into the strategy. And as you can see, the, you know, we can also identify the complexity. So, so low complexity, if we can just do the rehosting, that's good. Uh, so this gives a customer kind of an idea of how to build a cloud modernization journey, right? It clearly defines that. And when we were able to do this as part of the assessment and discovery that we did for the customer. So it's very important that you not only look for the, how you can modernize your data, but also look at how you can modernize your applications. Um, because that's where the true power of cloud really opens up. Um, you know, the, 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 the idea of that combustion engine uh, uh, concept that we talked about in the, in the first quote uh, from Gartner is that, you know, how do you really uh, make that explosive growth of uh, analytics and data and application modernization, right? Now, as I said, this is one of the, my most, you know, near and dear topics. And, and I want to spend a few minutes here because I think you guys would really appreciate the fact that um, you know, a lot of customers are very concerned that I go to cloud, how do I really test and make sure my, my performance is good, right? So here's a source system. So this is a methodology we use. Uh, uh, and, and here's a source system. So this could be Oracle, it could be Sybase, it could be SQL Server, it could be in-house application and third-party application. And as part of the assessment, before you do the POC, you capture user uh, activity. So this is real production user activity, right? Um, for, you know, how your users are interacting with the database, what information they are capturing, uh, queries they are running. And then uh, you convert the database, you migrate to Azure. So this is my target. This is in, in Microsoft Azure. So I've migrated my database. I migrate my application. Now, what you do is you replay these, uh, these production activity logs on your target, right? And when you replay them, number one, you find out, hey, is it really working properly? Number two, you know, uh, what does the performance look like? So if there is any query or application function that is running slow, you can then say, hey, is it because of storage or, or compute? Is it networking? What is it, right? So 90 to 95% of any um, performance issue can be fixed, identified and fixed using this, this methodology. Um, and this is something that I would highly recommend that you put that as part of your plan. So here's a customer now. So we, again, bringing back to how we applied that for a real customer and what were the results we saw. So this is a banking and finance customer who, you know, obviously banking and finance, you know, online banking response times are very, very important. So they were very concerned that if they migrate to cloud, their, their applications may not perform correctly. So, so here's a server that we were able to analyze. And this particular server is running these three applications, right? And then um, these are the different workloads within the application, as you can see. Now, we were able to run this on-prem and then in, in the cloud and capture the performance for each of the functions. So this is what I said about the user activity log. So we replayed that log. And as you can see, I mean, there's a, there's a long list. So if you see the scroll bar, there's a long list of queries here, right? So hundreds and hundreds of queries. So we're not gonna go through all of them, but just on an average, this is the pre-migration in milliseconds time it took to execute that query or their function. This is the post migration in milliseconds and what is the performance improvement, right? And there may be some where you have performance reduction. So that would be a minus number. So there are some queries further down that have the minus number, so they're running slower. But on an average, um, you know, 
uh, 32% faster performance in cloud. And the customer was really, really happy to see that. Now, um, as you all know, uh, if I increase the provisioning in cloud, then I can still get uh, better performance. So, so, you know, when you go to cloud, you go to a pay as you go model. So if I'm paying twice as much and getting 30% uh, performance improvement, that doesn't make sense, right? That's not good for me. So what I want to now validate, and this is where these charts are very important to as well. It's not just the performance, it is what is the utilization to get that performance. So, so in this case, to show you, the red line is the, um, the performance, uh, uh, the CPU utilization on-prem, right? And the blue line is the CPU utilization in Azure, correct? So what I'm saying here is that I get 32% more performance while my, my CPU utilization is less than on-prem, which is exactly what you need. Because what you wanna show is that I not only get more performance, but actually paying less for that. Because when you go to Azure or cloud, you actually pay for CPU, memory, IO, and storage, right? Well, the IOPS are not gonna be different. So those are, as you can see, those are, those are the same. And the memory utilization, which is also part of your cost in, 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 in cloud. So here again, uh, I'm getting better performance where my memory utilization, which is the blue line in cloud is less than the on-prem, right? So in one dashboard, we were able to show the customer that, hey, uh, you know, uh, we, we not only got you converted to Azure, but when you ran uh, the, the real production workloads, we were able to kind of show that, um, that comparison to them. And, and that's something that I, I think that's, that's very important. Now let's take this one step further, right? So let's say you have a mission critical application um, and you want to, um, you know, run this. And this is going to be very common: migrate it, run it in cloud. Now, what you don't want to do is uh, take the risk of just migrating it and then um, hoping everything works correctly. So this is common for like a mission critical application, twenty-four by seven. So in that case, what you use the concept of is um, is commercial trial. So basically what we do is we take the logs and we ship them to, to, uh, to Azure. Also we do data replication, right? So, so that way the data from on-prem is replicated real time to, to, to cloud. And then uh, you keep running both the systems um, you know, live. So, so this is your uh, production um, system, which is on-prem, right? Uh, but you are you are also running with uh, you know ten minute intervals, fifteen minute intervals, or or one day intervals. All the queries on Azure as well, so you can validate every day whether those queries are running correctly. The performance is good. You can keep doing this for several weeks, several months. We had one customer that ran both systems uh, live for almost uh, three months because they really wanted to make sure that everything is 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 working correctly. And then once you're happy and satisfied, you decommission the on-prem system, right? And then you make the, uh, the, uh, the production as your uh, Azure, okay? So, so this is uh, something that customers are really starting to adopt and, and it's a great way to, to reduce your risk, right? Because you are having both systems run live, uh, one on on-prem, one in Azure, and only when you're satisfied over a number of weeks, number of days, number of months, you turn off your on-prem, point your applications uh, to, to, uh, to Azure, and then you start making that as your production. So this can reduce your risk quite significantly in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the migration strategy. Okay, so I think we're just uh, about time. So I'll just go to my last slide and then we'll open up for Q&A. So in conclusion, um, many of you, majority of you said cost was a big concern, right? Um, you want to have a methodology, you want to have a framework, you want to be able to do this right. Uh, security is a concern. So when you're looking at your cloud journey, I would say, you know, from what we have seen other customers uh, approach it, um, definitely look at open source. So, uh, you know, if you haven't looked at open source like Postgres, MySQL, I would highly, highly rec rec uh, encourage you to look at those, uh, Microsoft Azure has full support for open source, Maria DB, Cosmos DB, and you can really reduce your cost of ownership and open up a lot of possibilities of, of for data modernization. Um, you, you should look for containerized uh, uh, technologies as well. 
Um, look at your optimization of queries. So if you have a badly behaving application or poorly performing application, don't just take it and move it to Azure because guess what? It's going to end up costing you a lot of money. And we have had customers who had to roll back. They actually m migrated that application back on-prem because it was every month the bill was coming really, really high. So you want to do some optimization. You want to make sure that you use data compression. You, you, you want to use, make sure that you have consolidation. So do your optimization before, or at least think about how you would optimize that, which ones you should migrate, which ones you should not migrate, right? Um, and understand the utilization, because when you go to cloud and Azure, you, it's all about utilization. So, and with databases, the utilization can be all over the place. So you really want to study them properly, what your utilization is. You know, if a system is only used eight, eight hours or four hours in a day, you don't need to uh, allocate a 24 uh, seven VM for it, right? But you need to have all this data so that you can plan and strategize. And lastly, you want to look at consolidation and optimization as well. So, um, uh, so with that, I think we have come to the end and um, let's, uh, uh, Shiraz, I'll hand it back to you so we can open up for Q&A and, um, and then um, uh, answer any questions. Thank you so much, Raj. It was an amazing session. And just for everyone who's wondering like, after this session, how, how do we move ahead? So we have a very exciting um, offering for you. This is a limited time offer. What, what, what we are offering right now is either a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our experts, where we will be looking at your current IT environment and try to give you the best way forward if you want to move to cloud. Another thing is that Raj spoke about in his session was a cloud readiness assessment, right? Before going to cloud, you need to understand if you are ready to move to cloud and, and what kind of challenges you might face. So having done an assessment before moving is something that, that you can look forward to. And the third, third offering that we are offering is uh, the commercial trial. So the commercial trial is, let's say that you've already decided that you want to move and you want to test it. So then in that, in that case, a commercial trial is something that you can look forward to. So these are the three offerings that, uh, that we have. These are sponsored along with Microsoft. So you do not have to like worry about anything else. And we would be helping you at each and every stage. So I think uh, um, Ananya, we can have another poll uh, just to understand if, if anyone is interested and then we can uh, take the questions. Sure, uh, Shresh, I'm just launching the poll. So I would request ev every one of you to, you know, just answer the question. So this is basically uh, that would you be interested in the below mentioned free offering by scalability experts? So I'm just launching the poll. Yeah. Okay, we have we have started getting responses now. People are opting for assessment, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think assessment is always a vital part before you move to cloud. Right. right? right. You need to know uh, what all is going on in your current system. True. and then move ahead. Okay, another five seconds more. So it's a clear cut win. Cloud readiness assessment is the first choice. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I think quickly I'll just, uh, uh, so I will just request everyone, if they have any questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A session. I'll take the first question. Uh, so the first question is, uh, the person is asking, Ani Sood is asking, we are currently using Oracle and would like to know the options of using open source on Azure. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So many of the customers that we work with who have Oracle are looking for open source because, and, and, and yes, uh, so if you're looking to migrate from Oracle, 
Postgres is your best option because Postgres uh, originates from, uh, there are a lot of ex-Oracle people who started uh, Postgres. From a code compatibility point of view, there's a lot of commonality. However, there are, you know, depending on what you're using in Oracle, Rack versus Exadata versus other flavors of Oracle, we have to really look at what features, you know, any enterprise features that you're using, whether they, they, they are supported in Postgres and whether, you know, how they would work. Uh, after Postgres, uh, MySQL is the next best option. Um, and then if you have enterprise feature issues uh, that are not supported by open source, then you can start looking at SQL Server as well. So absolutely. So as part of the assessment offer that is being presented, we can help you look at your Oracle footprint and understand how you would migrate that, what would be the cost of running that in, in, in the cloud and which ones you can migrate, which ones you cannot migrate, what the complexity is, all those things that I, I talked about today that are important. Okay, I hope that answers your question, Anish. If you have any follow-up question, you can definitely ask us. Uh, so Mr. Khan is asking, uh, they're currently using enterprise version of SQL and would want to know if there are any cost savings uh, by using a standard version. Yeah, absolutely, huge. Uh, one of the examples I shared with you uh, was a customer that was running hundreds and hundreds of licenses of enterprise. They only use enterprise license and they, they, they had no reason for that. Um, uh, the enterprise edition of, and that, by the way, this is not just SQL, even, even Oracle or any other uh, database, proprietary database. Typically, the enterprise edition licensing cost is five times more expensive than the standard edition, five times. So it can be very, very expensive depending on number of cores you have, number of machines you have. And, and remember, the licensing cost is based on cores. So that's why the optimization I talked about is very important. You want to look at uh, you know, how much is the utilization, whether you can do consolidation, with, how can you reduce the number of cores? Because when you migrate, you're going to be licensing by cores as well. So yes, absolutely. So part of the assessment, again, many of you have opted for it. If you haven't opted for the assessment, please, you can reach out to us. We will help you identify, hey, these enterprise uh, edition can be easily running in standard edition without compromising any security or performance or uh, any of the features that uh, that you may be using. Um, so, okay, okay, so he has another follow-up question saying, what time does it take for a free assessment and what do I get by the end of it? Yeah, so um, uh, Shreyas, we can follow up with, uh, with a sample uh, deliverable. Typically the time is one to two weeks. It's not a very long time. It depends obviously how much how big is your environment? Assuming it's a it's a hundred, a couple of hundred uh, servers and stuff like that, within within a week or two max, we can complete the assessment and deliver the findings to you. If you're interested in looking on uh, looking at a sample uh, a deliverable that that can be shared with you, also uh, you know there there's there's an offer for that consulting as well, so we can talk to you one on one, understand your environment, and kind of understand how to kind of do the assessment for you and deliver the specific things you're looking for. Got it. Got it. So um, I would request if, if there are any other questions, you can add it to the Q&A. We would be here for the next five minutes to answer your questions. If there is anything that you if you want, uh, you can just put it in the Q&A and we would be happy to answer your questions. Meanwhile, I will also request Rajinder and uh, Shresh if you can put your email ID so that, you know, mm, if anybody wants to write down and directly wanted to connect with you for any query, then they can write to it back to you. So, sure. So I, I'll do one thing. I'll I'll put my and uh, Raj's email ID, both the email IDs, in the chat. Sure. So the floor is open now. Anybody would like to ask any other question? We can take that up. We would also encourage everyone to share their feedback and suggestions. I am just putting one email ID on the chat window. You can uh, share your feedback there as well.
And by the way, if, if, uh, if I can share, we have an upcoming set, uh, webinar on uh, open source. So uh, if you're interested in that, somebody asked a question about Oracle. So there is one that's coming up. So if you're interested in learning how to migrate to open source and why you should look at that, um, please contact Shriyaz. Uh, he's put his email there and uh, we can send you the invite um, and you can take part in that as well. That's a great idea, Rajinder. And uh, really, uh, the session was wonderful. And I think we have gained a lot of insights uh, from this. And uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for being such a wonderful audience. Uh, shall we wrap up the session? Yeah, and thank you, everyone, on behalf of Scalable Experts to, you know, for taking your time. I know everybody's busy and participating in this session. Please provide your feedback. It's very important. And also let us know if there are other topics that you may be interested in. Um, uh, we can definitely uh, look at that and, and, and uh, reach out for whenever those topics are being presented in webinars going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care and stay safe.